room would love to thank its fabulous sponsors, JD Trust, Grand Choice Property Solutions, and of course, Boost Juice. Welcome back to the locker room, good folks. Before we press ahead with the big program tonight to feature our very, very special, and he is a special guest as well, just a couple of things to tidy up. Thanks to all our sponsors, we heart you. And also, don't forget the locker room Facebook page. Enter feverish debate about the world game and uh, enjoy the company of others with uh, similar thoughts about the game, both here and overseas. I'm Greg Blake, special show tonight, as I said. He's my co-host. But we keep forgetting, don't we, good folks at home? But he also had a very special place in Australian soccer history. He is Doug Hodgson. He's on the couch tonight, not as my co-host, but as a, a champion of the game, along with John Fodinos, Jay Fott. Welcome, gentlemen, to the show. You be quiet for a minute. Jay Fott, it's good to oh, see you great. again. Yeah, been away on a bit of a sabbatical, but great to be back on a special show. It is a special show because we overlook the fact that Doug, who is a wonderful person, and a, 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 he's got a beautiful sense of humour, he's warm and engaging, but we forget that he's actually a, 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 one of the best, well, you'd have to say one of the better players that we've exported from this country. And the drama of it is that at 15, Doug Hodson was told he would never play the game again. We'll talk about that. But by 23 years of age, this, this broad-shouldered gentleman next to me who's wearing his Sheffield United FC shirt was, in fact, turning out in English football for Sheffield United. What a journey from 15 to 23, Doug. It was good, thanks, Jay Ford. Greg, um, I'm, I'm in the hot seat. I'm sitting in the hot seat. We nearly put the uh, special guest in here. I feel special, guys. It was a good journey. You know, we spoke to some great people being on the show, Blakey, but uh, at 15-year-old, mate, um, bad car accident. Um, there was, don't try this at home, seven people in a little Datsun 120Y, which we remember going to a party, we're only 15 years old. And um, we got hit at 110k by a, a um, drunk driver, straight through a stop sign, hit us. Best mate died twice on the table. I, um, so he had open heart surgery, spleen removed, fractured pelvis, he's still alive, um, and he's still my best mate, known since we were born. Another good mate, flip top, 52 stitch in his head, lady broke her back. So really see I had severe whiplash, ribs, jaw, etc, etc, and um, my career basically, 13s, 14s, 15s of Victoria, basically it was coming to a bit of a standstill. Um. We'll talk a, a little bit about the early days, but I do want to go through this journey because we often, you know, mister, it's, we're a bit mystified and it's a bit, you know, the, run the journey out of time into a always, professional. We? we run out of time because you're exceptionally long-winded most of the time. But um, th coming back from that sort of adversity and ending up at, at Sheffield United, um, how did you end up at Bramall Lane from Australia? <laughs> now, I'll, I'll tell the truth. Okay, that I'll would be the excellent. Truth. I'll give yeah, you the no, truth. We were hoping for that. The truth is good. <clears throat> Obviously, playing it, um, came through the ranks. Franks and Pines, Duffed and Heidelberg. Played the National League at, um, at Heidelberg. Been there, went to Hull City quickly. Two year, came back. The figures broke down. Both clubs couldn't do an agreement. Came back, which was disappointing after my first season at um, Heidelberg. I was having um, working, and alone went out to Sunshine George Cross with um, and Ken Wagstaff. And then there was another particular time off season of the old National League. And there was an opportunity for me to go to Western Australia. At that time, I was doing a little bit of security work, and at that time that um, I needed to have a wee chat. So I thought it was probably a good time for me to wander over to Western Australia and play a bit of football out of Victoria. So I did. Went to Western Australia, played for a team called Donella Serbia, fantastic bunch of boys. There's a boy over there called Nicky, um, ended up being a painter and plasterer, gave me a car, great things. Western Australia, Sheffield United were touring um, Western Australia. So, Got the opportunity to represent Western Australia at senior level. Um, likes of we know, Sean Murphy, Stan Lazaridis, the Navin, the Twins. And that's all we've got time for, good folks. So, so how yeah. did you end up so, at, Br <laughs> at Bramall Lane? Friday the 13th at the Wacker. There's no doubt nobody can extrapolate <laughs> on the story as you can. Cut to the chase, Dougie. Sheffield United, two at Australia, played against them, had a great game against them in Western Australia. And um, they took me on, they took me around Australia on tour. 
Um, You're still not in England yet, but if you wait England, patiently, England, good folks, fight though. against Northern <laughs> South Wales, <laughs> played against Australia up in Brisbane, and basically after the tour, I played three games with Sheffield United, and um, there it was. They paid 140000 back then for me, and away I went to Sheffield United. <laughs> um, Dave Bassett, who has been in Australia, has come to see us, ended up at Bramall Lane, mate. So that's a short verse. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for your patience. So we're at Bramall Lane. Look, I don't know about you, John, but to, it, um, for, for people like mooks like us, I think we fantasise about having journeys like Dougie's. Yeah, except uh, I couldn't tell the story in any shorter form than Dougie. I mean, he's got the great gift of the gab there. But Dougie, can, tell me, when you were over there, how was it different to Australia? Well, oh, just the professionalism, the man of, you know, your training, you know, we, we had some we had, um, some great coaches. Our man love of Gary Cole, you know, which you know, he was the foundation for me so here. Back in Australia. Back in Australia, back again. Um, I, it was the professionalism, the training, and it was it was hard work. You know, you know, you're dropping weight, you're training twice a day. The professionalism, you know, I went. I was raw. I'm not going to say any other. I was a raw talent that went and obviously learnt the trade. It, England, and that's where it progressed. And I had someone like another Aussie, Carl Viet, from Adelaide. Yep. Obviously, the two of us become, so at least I had a friend there as I went into Bramall Lane. Now, we normally do Shirt of the Week, just to let you know, good folks at home, we're not going to do Shirt of the Week. We're going to swap shirts with Dougie as we go through a series of clubs. We have got to take a break, mainly because Doug Hodgson doesn't know when to shut up at the appropriate moment, but that's fine. We love him anyway. John Fodinos, special guest Doug Hodge and Greg Blake. Locker room, stay with us. We're going to groove and it's going to be smooth after the break. Welcome back to the locker room. Good folks home. Very special night tonight. Our special guest, Doug Hodgson. And it's fair to say that if you want to see the full version, watch the director's cut out on DVD. It goes for four and a half hours. But Dougie, the... <laughs> that was a take. <laughs> <laughs> but Sheffield United, just very quickly, and then you went on loan to Plymouth, then on loan to Burnley, and then you ended up at, at Oldham. So you've got the Oldham top on now. This is Dougie's second shirt of the week. But before we press on to, to that, Experience. I want to ask you one thing, and this is the thing that, that young people such as myself, when I was young in fact, we used to fantasise about. Well, the first time you were in the, the players' tunnel in English football with Sheffield United, do you remember and did you have to pinch yourself and go, sort of go, oh my God, I'm here? Both. Both. I got pinched. I, there's hair standing up now, just thinking of that moment right here. And I have to admit, I, before every game, I used to smell the grass at three o'clock as we do as players, and the players were out there, I'd look around the stadium, there was more than two, which was great. And I'd go, bring it on. This is what it's all about. Let's go. I was going to work and I was going to Adrenaline. do my job. Adrenaline was yep. pumping, sweat was there. I was ready to work, mate. Don't like to consider you sweaty, Dougie, but I can understand in the circumstances that that was part of the journey. <laughs> I don't um, have to do a warm-up, mate. Uh, and look, just quickly, before this transfer, Sheffield United to Oldham, just quickly, one highlight from the, from the time at Bramall Lane. Playing against, can I put in two quickly? Um, I quickly, I know you're yeah. playing against Arsenal, Highbury, magnificent. Um, there's more to that we won't go into. An old friend came up, knocked on the door, great to see him in the players' land. Carl Gilder. Yep, came yep. in there. And the other one was um, Aston Villa. Now, Carl Veer, there was other players, there was 22 players on the players' list. But um, Howard Kendall had came in, he was going to remove 22 players, we had a 50 man of pros, turn around and basically, he said there's 22, they sold 21. And up there was Milosevic, there was York, Mark Bosnich was in goal, South, um, South, nearly half the um, England squad. Had a great game. Next day, dragged in the office, a new two year contract. So for me, that was probably one of my stepping stones, validation, stage, validation yeah, 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 yeah. of the hard work. So that's it. Yeah. Dougie, as a defender, you wouldn't have been going forward too often, but did you score many goals? And which one would, would you say was your favourite? Mate, I got nosebleeds. Whenever I got over that halfway line, the old nosebleed kicked. I scored quite well. Actually, I got a few. But I'll go the main one, Bradford City, Mark Swartzer. First one I ever scored in my, in my career. Smashed one pass, a volley pass, Mark Swartzer. Oh, I got it. <laughs> no, I didn't. I was like, in there, get in there, it's magnificent. <laughs> and we won 2-1, it was the day... What's your name, son? What's your name? Get out the back. And it was the day we actually, Bradford, opened up the new stadium. 
Go back in 97. Yeah. After, yeah. 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 Um, off to Oldham. Off to um, Oldham, fantastic. No, I love this top. We've got some great photos of you in this studio. Yeah. Um, Neil Warnock. Yep. Neil Warnock quickly went, took me to Plymouth on loan. Um, I said to Harry Bassett, you send me any further to Plymouth? I said, I'll end up back in Aussie. <laughs> what are you trying to tell me? I would have been ill, dropped off at Plymouth. I would have been in there. I had six games there. They tried to sign me. They wanted £140,000. Then, so I ended up coming back, played at Sheffield, X amount of games, and then um, Neil Warnock rang and said, listen, he said, I'm going to come in for you. He said, would you come over to Oldham? I said, um, Sheffield you know, had offered me another year of contract. Warnock's gave me two years. Two and a half years at Oldham, and um, Oldham were looking the bigger. And then I thought, you know what? I just wanted to play, and away I went to Oldham. Jay Fight, who knew that our co-host had such a? I mean, we say this every week on the locker room, and it's no exaggeration, good folks. And one of the things that uh, that we find really hard is when we know that there's a great story there, and we just don't have enough time. And and because you're such a terrific bloke, I think we could actually spend, you know, a lot, a lot of time talking about this sort of stuff. But let's talk about the Oldham experience, memories. Great days, New Hay. We lived on top of the hills, mate. It was great. Um, top of the hills, snowed in, couldn't get to work. It was great. Oldham was great. It was um, vigorous. Um, QPR debut. Obviously, Andy Bennell was down at um, QPR. And um, there was Mark Hately, Scottish, big Scottish. That was my debut at Oldham. And we came away for one all draw. Big Mark and Big Hart. I got a great picture of me blowing him a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't quite happy, but we, we got a result. Mate, I just wanted to ask you too, what was sort of the the life outside football like? Just give us a bit of an insight. Well, as Blakey said, we could go for five and a half hours. It was, you know, it is it is a different world out there. You've got to be careful. Obviously, it's harder now with the boys being, you know, we were professional. Right? It was a, I, if I was playing Saturday, I've always been professional what I do. Two, it's Tuesday, cut-off period. So, you know, if you're out after a game, you'd go six weeks and not be out in a nightclub or not. Remember, I was on my own, um, living 12,000 miles away from my family, obviously. You need support, you need some cuddles. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> from all time, of all parts of life. <laughs> we won't take you at the risk of sub at the risk of subtext becoming text, we'll just we'll, we'll let so that Oldham go. Was, Oldham was great days. Neil yeah. Warlock's been Dave Bassett. And, Neil and I know, I know you speak about them quite often. Neil, the gaffer, as I call him, he he, made, he, he was he was a lot to me career as well. Dave Bassett. The two of them are very similar. Motivators, mate, is um, probably the best around as a motivator. I know Neil. A lot of people like and don't like. But um, for me, um, well, he took me back. As, obviously, took me with him as a coach afterwards. So they've been great in my career. Loitering with intent, and it's there. And North End can't defend those near post corners. And Doug Hodgson has put the ball in the net for all the Athletic. We played 33 minutes. And then it all comes back for me, Dougie. Is that, that journey when you were told at 15 that you would never play the game again? So here you are at Oldham loving professional football. Did you ever sit around, it? and I know you're not a reflective person, you're not a bright person in many respects, but you're not necessarily as introspective as some, but did it ever dawn on you and look back? Did you ever oh, look mate, back? I'll tell you the story, I know where you're going. I was at Liverpool. Liverpool's Christmas, I was a Liverpool supporter. In 1997, I was at Liverpool Chris, Liverpool's Christmas doing Jamie Redknapp. Jamie Redknapp was at my wife and I, our wedding. Um, Don Hutchinson, name dropper now, Blakey, but we had Michael Owen, Robbie Fowler, Stan Collimore. We, we drank till six o'clock in the morning on the Christmas do. There was Neil Ruddock, he had his Armani suit on. We had, I got some great stories which couldn't be aired, but mate, I sat there, or I stood there about 16 pints, you man. Patrick Berger's in there getting pints thrown over him. And I turned around. And I looked, and I said, he's a boy from the Pines in Frankston, and look where I am now and who I was involved with. Mate, it was something, and the description described, I could never tell you how the feeling, mate. It was unbelievable. I never, ever felt at one stage in my life that I would envy you, Doug, but now you're taking us on this journey. I actually do. I admire you and I envy you. We're coming back on the locker room with the part, part three of the Dougie Hodgson story, and I don't know about you, but I think he's one of the most engaging guests we've had. See you after the break. And welcome back to this very special edition of The Locker Room as we take a candid look at the great man Dougie Hodgson. And Dougie, I know we've spoken on an, uh, many, many occasions about your disappointment at, at not getting a chance for Australia. But, but that aside, 
you had a fantastic career, the last step in the journey in England with Northampton, and that's where it started to, to go a little bit wrong. And you've got the Northampton top on, because we do Dougie's shirt of the week, but tonight we're doing three, to commemorate Hodgson's great career in the UK. Northampton well, went from Oldham, went from Neil Warnock, obviously had left Andy Ritchie, ex-man you took over, and basically Ian Atkins came in and said, you know, would you be interested in coming over? Um, I've been there nearly two years at Durham Oldham. I'd, I'd had some success, done, had some great games, um, played against some big names and bits and pieces as you do on your journey. Went to Northampton and um, obviously went in there to take over as captain in Northampton. Um, they sold me, went there and I actually only played eight games, or well, actually ten games for Northampton and it was against Tottenham. Played one against Tottenham, got beaten 3 1 Janola, his big son, Sol Campbell. Mate, he hit me like a ton, and I thought I was ready for him. He hit me like a steam train. I went, What was that? Next one, we're okay. Got a great picture of me rattling the crossbar for header. Um, scored on my debut, so it was a dream start. Obviously, at Bournemouth, and then unfortunately, at training, I headed a soccer ball. Um, disc went bang, exploded. Hit my spinal cord, and basically, um, that's where my career basically unfortunately deteriorated and went from there. So the career had turned and I had... Did you, did you know it at the time? Did you think, oh, geez, I'm... You know, you know what, it's funny, Greg, it was not funny, but you turned around at the time, I'd done my neck, had to have a scan, and I had a car accident on the 1st of December 1984. When I found out that I knew, or I had a rough idea that I'd never play again, it was the same day. 1st of December 1999. They operated between Christmas and New Year. Obviously, 22 stables took the throat out and put, obviously, took me disc out. And they still now, as we know, guys, I still have problems. I, I'm in hospital every every 10 months to burn all the nerves in my neck and take the pain away. And that's probably ongoing until they fuse me the next level. So, soccer's good, but at the time, yeah, I knew I was in strife. So, from there, I got back on my feet, which was great, mate, and um, I got to coaching. You know, I went on me coaching and that's where it went. Before we get to that, I just wanted to say, we, every week we ask our guests to encapsulate one moment that, that they see as their favourite moment or their defining moment. What would you describe that in your playing career as being? Winning is great. You know what I mean? Winning is obviously someone's passion. You know, you walk away, but we won, you know, we won in the Sheffield United versus Wednesday was great. But you know what? I done me coaching there with a gentleman called Steve Bull. And you talk about your questions, Blake, you're the hardest people. We used to kick the lumps out of each other, but it wasn't malicious. It was, we'd be, we were great mates. We'd done our badges together. That moment, Tassel, playing against Wolves at Molyneux, 35,000 people. Mate, I loved and I used to smell the grass. And as a player, when you retire, that's what you miss. Yeah. You miss that smell of the grass and the banter in the changing rooms, the smell of the, you know, the dead rubble. That's a funny joke as we go, who's got the oil? <laughs> as we said last week. How did your mindset change though, Dougie, from transitioning from player to very coaching? Hard, very hard, very hard. I, you know, I think there'd be a lot of people out there that could look down the barrel and probably realistically look down the barrel and probably had problems that, as you know, David Seal, Mark Coney play, he was at Northampton, good lad. Going from there, it was great. Northampton um, took over the under-15s. Done me coaching um, badges with Stuart Pearce, England, Nigel Clough now at Sheffield United, um, Warren Barton played Newcastle, so there were some good people and you could naturally see that they were going to be qualified good coaches. So, I Baby, you, 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 Doug Hodgson, have lived the dream and I, I, I've known you now for, for some time, but just to sit here and listen to, to you speak cogently about some of your stories is eminently fascinating. My, I respect you as much now as I did before. You need to know that. Um, Dougie, I, no, I'm I, feeling the love. I'm feeling the love lady. No, you, you've lived the dream and you've done things that John and I uh, could never aspire to do and, and that's uh, fantastic. I'm, I'm so pleased you shared the journey. But now we're going to put you on the spot as we normally do with the quick questions. Um, and I'm interested because I know you have a, a tremendous regard for a number of your coaches along the career and you speak glowingly of any of them. Who was the best? I probably learned the more out of a gentleman called Brian Eastwick. He was the assistant to Dave Bassett, and he taught me the tricks of the trade as a centre half. I learned a lot. Don't get me wrong, Kendall, Howard Kendall, um, Ian Atkins, Andy Ritchie. Neil I, I said one, didn't I? Did uh, I say one? Yeah, yeah I'm pretty sure one. I said one. But they, they, they taught me everything. Yeah. They taught me as I've gone. Yeah. But I have to admit, mate, um, Brian Eastwick. He stuck. He, he 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 taught me the tricks of the trade as a centre half. Doug Hodgson, our special guest, Jay Fott on the couch with our special guest, Greg Blake, 
for The Locker Room tonight. Once again, don't forget, thank you to our sponsors. We love you, we really do. Uh, and The Locker Room Facebook page. If you want to enter into uh, a heated debate about Doug, the merits of Doug Hodgson's career, um, I'm sure that will be up on the Facebook page very, very soon. But now that you've learned a bit about him, Dougie, quickly, you can't get out of the quick questions. Um, toughest opponent you played again? Bruce Dyer, it was probably the strongest in the year. If you ever film it, which I, uh, there's some filming him handbag at four places, you know, he, he ripped me. He was, he was a strong, tough lad. Him and Bully, Bruce Dyer. And uh, the best player you played alongside over the journey? A bloke called Don Hutchinson. Well, I, you know, I'm going to pin Don. There's a bloke called Gordon Cowan's mate, played for Barn, played in England, played in Europe. What a fantastic. If you ever get a chance, Google. Um, Sid Cowan's dummy coaching bad with Sid as well. Magnific He's actually in charge of Dustin Villa doing the youth academy up there still now. But Don Hutchinson played at Liverpool, Everton. Things you've seen at Trainer Blakey was, you know, and obviously when I got involved, obviously, and I was the first Australian ever to coach professional. You know, he'd become Neil Warnock, took me to Sheffield United's reserve team manager, um, Jaggy Elka. You know, Jaggy Elka is going to be probably nearly the next England captain. I had him for a year and a half at Sheffield Coach, and so it was good to put back into what the game's been so good to me as well, Greg. And one last one from me, Dougie. What word of advice would you give to a 15-year-old, for example, now that's, that's on the cusp of making it in, in football? Listen and learn. Take on board. Listen to your coaches, because at the end of the day, every person will have a little percentage to put into your game. Did you do that at 15, Dougie? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I have to admit, there's a gentleman called Alexander, Alan Alexander. 13, 14 and 15, I'll touch on it. Trimboli, Stabber. We, we won three championships, you know. He touched a lot of my career too, Alan Alexander. He was a little gentleman, Liverpoolian, but a great man. I did listen. There was some great coaches, so I must have listened because I've progressed through the ranks. Kids, we've got to wrap it up on the locker room for another week. Jay Fott, it's good to see you again back on great duty. Back and great to hear some great stories from Dougie. It really is, and it gives you an insight into this guy who sits on the couch every week and we wonder, you know, what did he do with his life? Well, he did things that we could only uh, aspire to. It proves that intellect is no barrier. No. <laughs> Don't coach a spell test. <laughs> you don't need to be intelligent or articulate to be a football superstar. We've got to go, guys. Thank you so much for your company on the locker room tonight. Look forward to seeing you again next week. The other thing that gives you goosebumps, mate, is when the fans are singing your name, mate. <laughs>